Uh, today we're going to talk about the eight common distractions. Uh, first of all, people think, well, what is the mind? I mean, I've talked about considering the possibility that you have a mind, but you are not your mind, you just have one. And the idea is, how can I get it to work for me rather than against me? Well, that's an interesting possibility, but I want to suggest to you that the mind, perhaps, is like a bowl of water. If you just let it alone, it'll be still and quiet, and you can see deeper inside yourself. So what's the benefit of that? The idea is how to use your mind to live a good, sane life. Sounds easy? No, it isn't. Some of you uh, have maybe tried meditation. I've had a few people ask me lately, well, uh, we've heard about positive thinking in the West, we've heard about visualization, hypnosis, trance work, prayer, all these kind of things. And someone asked me the other day, well, but how about meditation? What's that? How does that fit into this idea that you have a mind, but you're not your mind? Well, I would say, say that other cultures have spent thousands of years studying this particular topic, and we in the West often are just beginners, because in the West we tend to look outward. We look at profit, we look at loss, we look at the IRS, we look at our boat, we look at our bowling league. Very seldom do we find the opportunity in our culture to be quiet. Nothing in our culture says, relax, calm down, and look inside yourself. Right? Well, meditation basically is the effort to stop looking out and start looking in. For example, let's say your mind in its natural state is like a bowl of water. Well, if you don't know that, your mind can just cause you all kinds of trouble. It makes you say the wrong things at the wrong time. It makes you do crazy things, drive people off the road, scream and yell, do all kinds of things, take careers you don't like. You find yourself in a job that you hate. You think, how did I get here, right? Well, meditation basically is learning how to stop looking out and begin to start looking inside yourself. One of the ways, of course, as we've tried this before, is you make yourself comfortable, you relax your jaw, slow your breathing, and then bring your mind inside to start noticing your breath. This is a classic meditation, beginning. Say, so, okay, I'm gonna, I wanna watch my breath. I've heard about this, I'm gonna watch my breath. So you shift your attention to your chest rising and falling. Rising and falling. Do that for about 10 seconds, then here come the thoughts. Bam, I get a PhD for this, bam. Or what am I gonna have for lunch after I finish the meditation? All these thoughts start coming in. At this point, the idea in the Hindu teachings that the mind is like a drunken monkey bitten by a scorpion starts to make sense. Because you realize Man, I'm trying to control my mind to watch my breathing. I can't do it. And if we had 100,000 people watching this show right now, I would bet there's not a handful of people out there who could watch their breath, really watch their breath for three minutes without the mind jumping in and dragging you off somewhere. So the first awareness is when you try this is realizing, man, this is tough stuff. I've accomplished some things in my life. I've done some things that I'm fairly proud of. They've been easy compared to meditation. So I'm trying to watch my breathing, for example, and here come the thoughts. The idea is they drag you off and you bring your mind back, say, well, let me watch, watch the breathing. And after a while, meaning after a number of years, your mind starts to calm down and you start to learn how it works, right? And the most interesting topic in the world to study is yourself. So now you sit with yourself and say, I'm gonna practice learning how I think, not what you think. What changes all the time? How is powerful. So as you start to re relax and try meditation on your breathing, you notice, well, there's eight common distractions that drag me off. One is praise, the other is blame, right? You're doing it because you want to get kudos for it. You don't want to blame, you don't want to get blamed for doing something wrong. Others, it's fame or disgrace, pleasure or pain. In our culture, it's usually gain and loss because we tend to really focus on money, profit, sales. Uh, I think the one particular thing we really focus on in America is the, the idea of progress. We really worship that one. But anyway. These eight common distractions 
are something you might notice when you're trying to really focus on your breathing. Here comes a thought. And you start realizing, wow, that, that goes into the pain category or that goes into the gain category. And you start to notice over time the qualities of your own particular mind, what drags you off and what brings you back. Then it gets very interesting to realize I can start to distinguish between the patterns that cause me trouble and begin to change them. Oh, example. Let's say you're working with jealousy, right? Um, so as you practice meditation and really get into this stuff, you might say, well, let me see how I create jealousy. So you would deliberately sit down, make yourself comfortable, relax your jaw, slow your breathing. <sighs> okay, now I'm gonna create jealousy. How do I do that? Hmm, I gotta see a picture in my mind of me and my ex-wife or whatever happens, uh, my, my wife, and then I, somebody comes in and something happens and I start getting these feelings of jealousy. Uh, and then I notice, for me, I zoom in and get a close-up picture, and zooming in is a quality that magnifies feelings for me. For you, maybe not. But you find out how to make jealousy increase, and then you have a way to make jealousy de decrease. For example, if I had a scene and I zoom in, my emotions and whatever I'm focusing on go up. Right? So, I zoom out, and the emotions go down. So let's say, working with the idea of jealousy, if I zoom in, I increase jealousy. If I zoom out, let's say 100 yards, so the, the picture that I'm seeing in my mind is 100 yards away, and I'm looking at it, it's a small little picture, jealousy disappears. With me? You, or in this case, me, <laughs> I create these feelings. I take full responsibility for learning how to uncreate them. Nothing out there is doing it to me. I am doing it to me. Hmm? So meditation is a way to say, well, let me see if I can learn how my inner workings are causing trouble and how are they causing success or creativity or bliss and as you learn how the mind works, then it becomes very interesting at how you can accomplish your goals, and some of them very, very profoundly. Some of you might find that there's patterns that really jam you up like smoking or weight loss or anger or whatever they happen to be. And as you study these qualities, you realize I have leverage inside to create something different. Another classic example, insomnia. This is a good one. Insomnia, if you, if you stop for a second and you go inside and say, well, how am I thinking to create this insomnia? And you may find that you are talking to yourself faster and faster and faster. Oh, but I can't sleep. These cars are going by. I have so much to do. I got to get up in the morning. Blah, 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 blah. You tend to talk to yourself faster and faster in a harsh tone. Not everybody, but most people will do that. And now they're trying to sleep, but they're wide awake and somewhat irritated. So you reverse it and you talk to yourself slower. Say, bud, it's okay. You don't have to sleep right now. You can let your toes relax, let your toes sleep. Let your let go on. You talk to yourself quietly, calmly, peacefully, in a nice tone. You reverse the qualities that you use to create insomnia to create going to sleep. Right? That's one of the benefits of learning about meditation is you begin to realize the real interesting game is inside. It's not out there, it's inside. We talked earlier about the two powers of mind and how you, you can look around the room, wherever you happen to be, look around and notice nothing, nothing that you see has any intrinsic value in and of itself. I create the value for the entire experience, right? If that's true, I can change the value, right? Um, I was a professional baseball a long 
player a long time ago, and I loved baseball. I loved playing it. I just was a fanatic about it. Today, uh, I'd rather do something else. If baseball didn't change. I changed. The value that I gave it changed, right? It didn't change. The game, the real, real game is inside. As you learn how your mind works, you then can begin to have it work for you rather than against you. Some of you might find that these eight distractions that we talked about are the ones that to kind of begin and give you a sense of if you're trying to sit there and be quiet and still, trying to hold your mind in one place and realizing you can't do it and you can't, but you realize, what is it that drags me off all the time? Well, it's the desire to, uh, to make money or to date Susie or I don't want to get blamed for or praised or fame. Or, you, you start realizing there is qualities that are your weak points, right? Well, there's also qualities that you can create that are your strong points. Uh, another way to deal with holding the mind quiet, besides classic meditation where you're sitting still, um, people all around the world have used what's called mantras. Hail Mother Full of Grace for a lot with me, that's Catholic mantra. You repeat it over and over. It could be Aditya Prudayam Punyam Sav Shatru Bina Shanam. Ready? Huh? Yeah. No? no? Okay. It could be uh, Om Shanti, Om Shanti, any kind of repetitive phrase. It's like saying, uh, I can't control my mind. Let me say a phrase over and over, and pretty soon the mind will start to pay attention to the words and the tone, and it'll keep you out of mischief. Okay? So when you're in traffic and it's tense and you get jammed up, you can say over and over a particular phrase that works for you. Uh, another way, uh, running. So if you're a runner, you know how that first mile, at least for me, that first mile is a tough one because you, your mind starts saying, why are you doing this, <laughs> right? Well, I don't allow that mind to jump in there. I hear that, I, why are you doing this? You've got to push that thought through and put in a different type of mantra, a different thought. In this case, relax and make it. Relax and make it. Check your feet. Are you running straight? Check your hands. Are you relaxed? You're breathing, your rhythm, you, you go back and cycle through an inventory of your body and then relax and make it. Relax and make it. Don't let your mind run you. Right? You learn to have your mind work for you and when it's not working for you, kind of keep it in neutral for a while before it starts beating on you. Anyway, uh, that's Mind Boggles for the day. Hope you enjoyed it. The eight common distractions, praise, fame, pain, loss, blame, disgrace, pleasure, gain, those kind of things may be the eight ones that kind of take you off the path. But if you can, you might try just seeing if you can make yourself comfortable, relax your body, relax your jaw, slow your breathing, and see if you can just watch your chest rising and falling for two minutes. And watch what happens. See what your mind does. Yeah. Anyway, my name's Bud. Hope you enjoy the show. And until next time, take care of yourself and see if you can help somebody else today. Talk to you later.